I'm currently standing in Test World's indoor four and five tracks, which are gonna give me the ability to answer a question I've been trying to answer for years. And that is, what is the actual crossover point for dry and wet braking for summer, all season and winter tires? The industry uses a seven degree rule. Now this doesn't necessarily mean a winter tire is gonna suddenly be better than a summer tire at seven degrees. What it means is once the average temperature for your region drops below seven degrees, that's when you should start thinking about a more cold weather biased tire because you're gonna have cold evenings and cold mornings and maybe some frosts. Until now, the exact crossover point of tires has been impossible to answer because in spite of growing what I thought was a Thor-like beard, I haven't been able to control the weather. Fortunately, thanks to Test World's brand new indoor four and five tracks where we can precisely control not only the air temperature, but the tarmac temperature and the water temperature, we can answer the question. We're gonna to get to test dry and wet braking at two degrees, six degrees, 10 degrees and 15 degrees. And this will be able to answer the question that no one has ever answered before. And that, where does the balance of performance lay at different temperatures? And is it the seven degree rule that you should be switching over? Or is it five degrees or is it 10 degrees? As always, I pick the very best tires I can for each of the segments. For the summer tire, we've got the Continental Premium Contact 6. For the summer bias all season tire, we have the one and only Michelin Cross Climate Plus. For the all season tire, we have the Continental All Season Contact. For the winter tire, the Continental Winter Contact TS860. And for the Nordic winter tire, the Nokian Hakapalita R3. This should be a very interesting test and is, as far as I'm aware, a world's first. So let's go get the data. First test of the day is wet braking at two degrees. Now, before I tell you the results, I need to quickly explain how these tests are run because it's an important part of the story. Now, although we have five sets of tires on test, we're actually running six sets. We have a control tire and that's a matching tire that we run at the start and then the other one at the end and that way we can calculate any variance in the surface or the car or driving or anything like that. The control tire for this test is the Michelin Cross Climate because it's an excellent stable tire. So we ran that first. Now, the first run out on the Michelin Cross Climate, everything was as you expect. It's a good braking tire. It ran the course fine. We did six or seven stops, averaged it out and got the golden number. The next set was the summer tire. Now, the first surprise of this for me, at two degrees, I thought the summer tire wouldn't be that far off, but how wrong I was. It was nearly five meters off, was absolutely huge. And I've got a funny feeling I'm gonna eat hump all by because I thought personally, I thought the crossover temperature for wet braking was gonna be about four or five degrees. And if it's like this at two degrees, I'm really wrong. But that's not the only surprise. The other surprise is because the air temperature in here is about a degree and a half, where we're pulling water off the wet braking, which is two degree water temperature, it's warm to that temperature, it's cooling and it's condensing on the floor where we're just dragging it out of the pit and it's turning into that frosty autumn winter's morning we get so often in the UK where the surface is just kind of greasy. And let me tell you how bad the summer tire is compared to the cross climate. I was so ill prepared for how bad it was gonna be. I almost did a Kool-Aid guy thing and burst through the end of this, through the barriers, into the offices and be like, oh, hi. It was terrifying. The first run down, before I'd done any braking run, just to get to the turnaround point and come back, about halfway down, casual speed, touched the brakes, and all I got was duh, 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 of the ABS. It was terrifying. I had no idea, I do this for a living, and I had no idea that the summer tire would be that bad in those greasy, damp conditions. Luckily, got the car stopped, moved over to the dry line, which was saving for dry braking tomorrow. But if, there was ever a reason to not fit summer tires in the winter, that's just demonstrated to me. Anyway, the summer tire, five meters longer than the cross climate. The all season contact, the other all season tire, the slightly more winter optimized all season or less summer optimized all season tire, was a tiny bit behind the cross climate and felt very similar during traction and braking and everything. Uh, the winter tire, Again, roughly the same distance, a little bit longer, but on this kind of greasy surface we've developed, um, it just felt more sure-footed, had a little bit more traction. And again, the Nordic winter tire, although the Nordic winter tire isn't designed for wet braking and dry braking, so it could only really match the summer tire in the actual braking test, coming around either ends, that's where the Nordic winter compound just gave you that much more performance. So don't look at the Nordic compound as a negative when it's only matching the summer tire and wet braking. It's not designed for that. It's designed to combat so many more conditions that any of the other tires are designed for. So that's the wet braking at two degrees. 
let's move it to six, six and a half degrees and see what happens. The next braking run was done at about six and a half degrees. Now I'm gonna try and keep this a lot shorter than the last one because I realize this is gonna be a very long video talking about braking if I'm not careful. Now the tall season tires remained about the same, which was really impressive considering the high jumping temperature. The two winter tires gained about half a meter, so nothing drastic, but the summer tire shaved around four meters off its stopping distance, which is huge. But it's still behind the all season and the winter tire at six and a half degrees. Next temperature will be 10 degrees. Well, now we've done the testing at 10 degrees, it's a lot like six and a half degrees, but just a little bit further on as you'd expect. The two winter tires have added a little bit again. The all season tires have crept up a little bit. So they're again about a quarter of a meter or half a meter longer, depending whether it's the Michelin or the Continental. But the summer tire, finally at 10 degrees has just about dipped under the winter tires braking distance but it's still behind the tall season tires that's interesting i did not expect that so let's move on do one final test at 15 degrees and see if the summer tire can be the summer tire hurrah at 15 degrees the summer tire has finally become the summer tire and has a small advantage in braking but the tall season tires still very close and very impressive the other thing Test World have at this incredible facility is this, an indoor snow handling testing facility, which means we can do snow testing when it's 20 degrees outside in the middle of summer. This gives us the opportunity to test the tires in the snow. What I'm doing is I'm driving as you would on a road, as a normal driver would on the road, where the tire is giving you confidence, you're going a little bit quicker, and where you're feeling the tire unsteady and slipping underneath the car, you're going a little bit slower. The summer tire, unsurprisingly, instantly recognizable as the summer tire, offered no traction, was terrifying under braking, and when you were turning and braking, or turning and not braking, turning and accelerating, it just didn't work. So, unsurprisingly, the summer tire was the slowest at about a 43 second lap. The next two tyres, the Tool Seasons, the Michelin Cross Climate and the Continental All Season Contact, they felt very similar. They improved on the summer tyre in braking and traction, no end. The turning was a little bit better and they dropped the lap time to around a 31, 32 seconds each. So 10 seconds off the lap time, which is huge around such a short course. The difference between the two tyres, well, I think the Continental All Season Contact just felt a little bit better on turning. The winter tyre, built on the base of these two just a little bit more and it was about half second quicker the continental wing to contact just it just gave you a tiny bit more confidence with everything you did a little bit more confidence on braking a little bit more turning and that's where the extra siping comes into play that gives you the grip on snow and the side grip on snow that the all season tires have less of and then switching to the Nokia and Hakapalita R3 the Nordic compound that's where this tire shines. Now, in lap time, it was only about a second quicker again than the winter. Where the significance laid was there's a bit of snow which is sort of polished off almost to ice on this and every tire, when it hit that, just slid wide quite suddenly and just unnerved you as a driver. The Nordic compound, didn't and that's where these tires excel this is why this tire can't match the other tires in wet braking at any temperature because of the optimizations it has to make for snow and particularly ice just means when you do hit ice you're not upset it's not a big shock these things are incredible now we've done that let's go back to the braking where we're reversing the temperature we're starting a hot temperature and getting colder and seeing where the balance of performance lays between the tires because wet braking as we found out was actually quite surprising so dry braking, the good news is you don't have to listen to me go on about braking for too much longer because it was as we expected. We started the day at eight degrees because we didn't want to risk not getting the tunnel really cold at the end of the day, which is where we really wanted to see the differences. So at eight degrees, the summer tire was best. At six degrees, the summer tire was best. And the final braking run at two degrees, uh, the summer tire was best. The all season tires, the Michelin Cross Climate was best of the rest at every temperature. And the Conti all season contact got a little bit better as it got colder, as did the Conti winter contact. But all types of tires remained very stable. And that's just a fact of how siped tires grip into the surface when braking. Braking requires lots of rubber in contact with the surface and solid tread blocks. Whereas siped tires, which you need for snow performance, they have lots of block movements and you've got more void where they pack in snow. So that's their disadvantage. So as we thought, as we hoped, as I hoped at the start of the day, dry braking at any temperature goes to the summer tire. And I expect this trend to continue even down into the negative temperatures. After filming dry braking, Tesswold kindly offered to stay late so we could dry test at 0 degrees. 
The results were interesting, with the summer and two all-season tyres starting to converge, which is where we'd expect the results to remain. So I started this test hoping I could disrupt something and disprove the seven degree rule and have a new, more accurate rule that's come from this test. But you know what, it turns out the multi-billion worldwide tire industry knows a little bit more about tires than me and the seven degree rule is actually a very good rule. What we learned is a summer tire is very good in the summer and even in the dry down to zero degrees, but in the wet, it starts struggling even at seven degrees. So that's when you need to think about switching up. All season tires have a good blend of performance, especially as it's getting colder and they still have some snow qualities. The winter tire, a little bit behind the all season tires and the braking, that's because of the extra sides, but that gives you the snow performance. And then the Nordic winter tires, well, if you're in a climate that needs a Nordic winter tire, like here in North Finland, you don't even consider these. You just fit a tire like the Nokia and Hakapalita artery because it copes so much better with heavy snow and ice. What this test has done is kind of hardened my standpoint on that the optimum way of motoring in the UK isn't a dedicated summer and winter tire. And it's not just an all season tire. It's actually to use a summer tire as a summer tire and then an all season as a winter tire because it gives you that braking, especially in that slimy, greasy conditions that upset this tire so badly it gives you that performance and still has snow performance for the one day every two years we get where there's actually snow on the road. In harsher climates, a dedicated summer and winter tire is a smart option. Once again, huge thank you to Testworld for enabling this test to happen. If you ever want to go to Bogning in the middle of summer, come here and use their indoor snow arena. Or if you ever want to control the temperature of a half kilometre long tube, here's the place to do it. Any questions about the test, ask below. As always, there'll be a link in the description to the Tire Reviews website with loads more data. And if you've got any thoughts on your own tires, feel free to leave a review. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. The next video will be studs versus Nordic versus normal winter tires on ice. What's gonna be best? I wonder, metal or not? Happy motoring.